And as for B students, this is a little bit extra. Uh, so this is part five of lesson 5.1. Um, this is a little bit extra. You I do have two of uh, these problems on your homework assignment. And this really does tie in everything that we've done in 5.1 with everything that we've discussed in um, chapters one through, uh, one through four. Um, it's really important on this to realize, um, to label things and to also um, realize all the rules and all the properties that we've discussed over the past, you know, months. And if you're in Algebra B, then it's all the stuff that you learned um, last year. Okay, so this really does tie into everything. This is a really good review of this. So I have the points four, three, X and seven. That's an order pair, X and seven. I don't know what X is. So that's my goal. I have got to find X. I have got to find X. And I know that my slope is two. Well, if you remember from previous uh, videos, the very first thing we have to do is label. So I'm gonna label this as X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And remember slope is really the M, right? M equals slope. So this is M equals two. Okay. Well, it's important to remember the formula. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, that's cool. So we've labeled, we have our formula. So what do we do next? Good, we plug in. We plug in what we know. So we're gonna plug in what we know. We're gonna plug in two n for m because two is our slope. We're gonna plug in 7 in for y2, 3 in for y1, x in for x2, and 4 in for x1. Uh, okay, now again, it's important to realize PEMDAS and your cross products. PEMDAS again is the order of operations. Order of operations. You guys call it PEMDAS, you guys also call it, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And in cross products, cross products is when I have two ratios um, that I can solve for the value by literally taking the cross products. So let's say if I have um, 2 over 3 equals 4 over x, I can figure out what x is by doing cross products. I can take 2 times x and then set that equal to three times four and two x and I can solve from there so two x equals twelve and how do I get x by itself I can divide so x equals six and you can probably figure that out too because two times two is four three times two is six so we use the cross products and that's literally drawing a cross like drawing a multiplication symbol across your two equation across your equation and solving for that missing variable. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So looking at this, first I'm gonna apply PINDOS, because PINDOS tells me I can simplify within my parentheses, right? So remember the numerator is a parentheses because I have um, numerator and denominator means grouping, and pretty much you're on the top floor, you're on the bottom floor, numerator, you're on the top floor, so you are separated from the denominator or the bottom floor, and you guys are in groups. You're a group of your own. So I can put these in parentheses and solve this. And four, seven minus three is four. Okay, now here's the biggest thing, two that you need to remember. Well, there's just a two over here, right? Is the two in the numerator or is it in the denominator or is it in both? It's only in the numerator. So how did I come up with just a two? Well, anything divided by what gives me two? Anything divided by one, so isn't this really two over one? Yeah. So I can use cross products and, by, and solve this from here on out. Again, cross products, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a cross around my problem. I come up with two times the quantity of x minus four. Now this is really important to remember, this is in the denominator. So the denominator is in a group, it is a group, okay? If you don't realize that, then you're gonna come up with the wrong answer because you're gonna be tempted just to get the two to the x and not two to the four, the negative four. Okay, so my cross products is two times the quantity of x minus four equals four times one, because that's my other cross product. Okay, 
So four times one is four. And then I look down here, what do I have to do with this two? If it's on the outside of parentheses, remember what rule you have to apply there. You have to distribute it, good. You have to distribute the four, uh, the two, sorry, the two to the x and to the negative four. So in doing so, distributing means I multiply it. So two times x um, minus four times two. So we got two x minus eight equals four. And how do I get x by itself? Well, again, this goes all the way back to chapter two. I have um, to do the inverse of things. So inverse of operation of subtraction is addition. So I have to do, add it to both sides. And again, that's the subtraction property of equality. When I, or sorry, the addition property of equality. When I add uh, the exact same thing to both sides, that is the addition property of, e of equality. So four plus eight is 12. And these guys cancel out. That was the whole entire purpose, right? Because I wanted to remove this from my 2x. Okay, so now I have 2x equals 12. How do I get x by itself? I need to divide because inverse operation of multiplication is division. And again, I know that this is multiplication because they're hugging each other. They're, they're touching each other, okay? So I divide by 2, I get x equals 6. And I can come over here and I can check it. This is really big to me, is checking our work and making sure that this is actually indeed okay. So I have the order pair 4, 3, and now I know that this x value is 6, so my other order pair is 6, 7. Well, checking it, again, and I have my slope of 2, right? So I'm going to check it and make sure by plugging it into the formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus um, 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So indeed, we are correct. Our x value is 6. Okay, so I do another one, same process. And again, um, these are a little bit extra. These are, I do have two of these problems on your homework assignment. However, um, I would, like I said, I, I do want you to try these out because I think it's really important. And go back, go based off of your guys' notes, okay? So looking at this, we have our order pair of 2, 4, x, 8, and slope of, of negative two. So go ahead and pause the video and look at the previous notes that you just took and use those steps to solve this. Okay, so assuming you paused your video and you actually tried it out, let's take a look at this. We have label our things, because to me that is the biggest part of this. If I can label my, label my order pairs, label what I know, then I'm going to be able to stay organized. So I have x1, y1, x2, y2, m equals negative 2. What's the second thing you did? Good, you should have said you evaluated because you did. You evaluated, you knew that the slope equation or the slope formula was m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. How many of you guys already have that memorized already? Yeah, you should because we use it all the time now. This is not going away. This is something that is going to be with us until the very end, I promise, okay? So you know the formula, so you plugged everything in. That's what you should have done. You should have plugged in everything. And then you should have used PENDOS and cross products to solve this. To me, that would be the easiest way of doing this. So with doing that, PENDOS tells us that eight minus four is four. I can simplify that. Also, we know that when we have a whole number or an integer, because it's not negative to an integer, is, it, is negative to a whole number? No, but it is an integer. It's a negative integer. So we have negative two, and we know that if we have a negative integer or a positive integer, it doesn't matter, that I can write that as over one and give me a fraction because anything divided by one is itself. So negative two divided by one is negative two. I just am renaming it. I'm giving a little bit of being redundant in ways. I'm putting it over one. Why am I doing that? Because of cross products. Cross products allows me to, uh, the, putting it over one will help me make sure that I do my cross products correctly. And what is cross products? Remember that cross products is when I draw my um, X over it, draw my cross over it. And remember too, that X minus two is in the denominator. Therefore it is a group. Therefore it needs to be put in parentheses. That's why my biggest thing on this is, if you remember that numerator and denominator are groups, 
and there are uh, things that you cannot simplify, go ahead and put in parentheses. It'll make your life a lot easier, I promise. Okay, so cross products tells me I go from, um, I literally draw a cross across it, and I have negative two times the quantity of x minus two, and I have that equals to four times one, because that's my other cross product. Okay, then it comes down to solving it. So how did you guys go about solving it? Hopefully you guys would have uh, distributed. Now this is what's gonna catch you guys up too as well. Okay, well, negative two times x is negative, x, or negative two x. Totally agree with you here. Okay, however, some of you guys are gonna to try to tell me that this is negative four. It's not, because a neg this is a negative two, isn't it? This really is saying negative two. And what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. So negative two times negative two is gonna give me a positive four. A lot of you guys, and trust me, it's, it's consistent, right? It will never fail that people forget that this negative sign this subtraction sign really goes with that two. So this is a negative two times a negative two. That's gonna give me positive four equals four because of four times, uh, four times one is four. So and then it comes down to solving it using our inverse operations in order to get our x by itself in order to isolate our x. So how do we do that? We subtract four from both sides. Hopefully you guys did that. Came up with negative two x because these guys cancel out. And these guys actually cancel out too, right? Four minus four is zero. And how do I get X by itself? I divided. So this is gonna leave me with X and zero divided by a negative two. Well, that's cool because we've already had the discussion when zero's in the numerator. If zero's in the numerator, then I automatically know that X is zero. Good. So let's check it out. So I can say, that, hey, now my order pairs are two, four and zero, eight. My slope is negative two. Is this really the case? Well, using our formula, we could check this out and say, hey, eight minus four, because y2 minus y1 over um, x2 minus x1, so zero minus two. So eight minus four is four, zero minus two is negative two, and four divided by negative two is negative two. So we indeed did check this out. Okay, so you have two problems like this on your homework. I want you to try it out, okay? I want you to try it out. Do the best you can on it, right? Um, and that concludes part five, I think. Is it five? Part, oops. Yeah, part five of lesson 5.1. Thanks, guys.